Let's start with the second topic for this session. In this topic, we'll be starting is modern methods of capital budgeting. Now, what do modern methods do? They take into account as a time value of money concept. Now, when we talk about time value of money, talks about that the money value of money in hand is more important. So, what do we take into account as the present value factors? As we have discussed in now, either you can use a formula or you can use a table to take it forward. But keep it simple. Whatever is more easy for you to understand, go ahead with it. Now, when you are finding out NPV method, profitability index, or IRR, these methods are covered under modern methods. And whatever modern methods are used, you need to require to use time value of money. And there is always a controversy today which method is the best because each method contradicts itself, and there is always a like. Something which is better than the other method, but widely used method today is net present value and IRR, that is internal rate of return. We'll be starting one method at a time. Let us start first is with the net present value method. Now, it the name is very clear. Present value. We have to take the present value of our cash flow. Of what now? If you have seen, remember the first session when I was started capital budgeting. We said we take into account cash flows. Irrespective of whatever method you cover, we have cash inflows and cash outflows. So in this method, when we talking about the present value, we talk about the present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows. Now it means a net present value. Net means the final. Amount which is left at the end, after from your inflows you have met your outflows. What is the extra profit remaining at the end? I'm not talking about the break-even level. Break-even level will be what? When inflows are equal to outflows, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what profits are still left after you have met your outflow. In short, what it will be? Inflows minus outflows, right? So NPV is used with the formula. Cash inflow minus cash outflow. Now, remember it's a net present value. So what do we do? We do present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflows. Now, what are cash inflows over here? They are profits. What are cash outflows? They are investment. So after from your investment and profits, what is the final amount remaining at the end? And based on that, you accept a project. You never accept a project with a negative NPV. If you get a negative NPV, you reject a project. Projects are only accepted which have a zero or positive NPV. Higher the NPV, you accept a project. Lower the NPV, you reject a project. And this is how NPV is actually taken into consideration. This method takes into account time value of money. Now, how do we do net present value method? Let's do with a small illustration. Now, as you can see this illustration now, a project is in the consideration of a firm. Okay, the initial outlay of the project is ten thousand. Okay, this for the simplicity sake, I have told you ten thousand. Practically, nobody actually viably go for ten thousand and break their head. Just for simplicity sake, to explain you understand the concept of NPV, we have taken ten thousand rupees. It is expected to generate cash inflows of four thousand, three thousand, five thousand, and two thousand in the years to follow. The total rate of discount is ten percent. Find out the NPV. You can do this illustration with the other methods also. Let's do this method only with NPV and see how do we find the net present value. Now we need two things for net present value as we discussed just now. We need its present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows. Now, if you see, inflows are how much? Four thousand, three thousand, five thousand, and two thousand. The discounting rate is ten percent. So, present value, how will you find when you start discounting it? So, if you have a calculator, or you can use a present value table. If you use a present value table, ten percent factors how much you'll get? Point nine zero nine, point eight two six, point seven five one, and point six eight three. Multiply your cash inflows with the present value factors. You get present value of cash inflows like four thousand into point nine zero nine will give you three thousand six twenty six. Continue. Three thousand into point eight two six will give you two thousand four seventy eight. Five thousand into point seven five one will give you three thousand seven fifty five. Two thousand into point six eight three gives you what one thousand three sixty six. Add up your total cash inflows. You get it's a total present value of cash inflows. When you add it up, how much you get? You get is one thousand two thirty five. So how much is your present value of cash inflows? Eleven thousand two thirty five. We got the one thing correct. Now what do we need? The second thing now, present value of cash outflow. Cash outflow you see is how much? Ten thousand. The project requires investment of ten thousand. So your outflows are ten thousand, right? How do we do NPV? Present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. Now if I tell, if you ask me why we are not discounting the outflow, 
Our flow is happening in zero year and base year. And if you remember, we discussed for zero year present value factor is always one. Ten thousand rupees will be ten thousand only today. So ten thousand into one gives you how much? Ten thousand only. So if you subtract inflows with outflows, eleven thousand two thirty five minus ten thousand. How much you get is the NPV. We get a positive NPV in this case, and we get is one thousand two thirty five. Accept a project with a positive NPV. Reject a project with a negative NPV. NPV is positive. I'll accept over here. Now, if you're comparing projects as well, compare a project with the higher NPV and reject a project with the negative NPV or a lower negative. NPV. If all the projects give you negative NPV, reject all the projects. Projects which have a positive NPV are only to be accepted. Now, when you solve this, what advantages did you find? This method takes into account time value of money. If the investment amount is different, this method takes into account. Remember, what is the goal of finance? Shareholders' wealth should be maximized. This method takes into account that point as well, and is very helpful in selecting mutually exclusive projects. Now, but still, this method has serious limitations. Sometimes it's difficult to understand when calculations are huge. Similarly, if you see why did you that this ten percent discounting rate was given to you in the illustration? Why did we assume ten percent? Why can't we assume eleven? Why can't we assume twelve? And it's a major disadvantage of this. Why we assume this ten percent? And this disadvantage is lead to the emerging of IRR method, which we'll be covering later on. So the major disadvantage of this method was that similarly, when different lives of projects are, so they one project have a life of five years, other have ten years, some have six years. This method does not take into account at all. That's why this method covers from serious disadvantages also, but it's an improvement as your traditional methods. NPV is most of the common use method today widely as well. Now, NPV, if you see now, it takes and gives an answer in rupees, right? If the in currency, to be very specific. Inflows minus outflow, and all in currency or rupees amount which is there. Now sometimes when the amounts are very huge, like when I talk about lakhs, millions, then NPV is very confusing. I think how answers we get and when we are comparing projects. That's why to remove this disadvantage, profitability index method came into picture. You get an answer as an index, and how do you find out an index? Keep it very simple. NPV was what inflows minus outflows, right? What does profitability index does? Inflow divided by outflow. So present value of cash inflow divided by present value of cash outflow will get an index, and based on that index will measure. Higher the index I'll accept, lower the index I'll reject. How do we do it? Let us continue with this illustration. If this illustration itself, if you need to find inflows and outflows using your Profitability index method. How will you do? Very simple. Present value of cash inflow divided by present value of cash outflow. How much are total present value of cash inflows? When you worked out just now, you saw eleven thousand two thirty five. Present value of cash outflow was ten thousand. So eleven thousand two thirty five divided by ten thousand gives us how much? One point two three five. Right. So higher the profitability index, I'll accept. Lower the profitability index, I'll reject. So it's more precise. You can say. It has an easy selection because NPV was more on amounts, and the amounts are very huge. It becomes confusing. That's why profitability index came into picture. You can there was a small modification to profitability index also. You can also find net profitability index. What do you do to gross profitability answer minus one from there? If the answer is positive, I'll accept. Answer is negative, I'll reject. Okay, don't worry. Net profitability index is not in your syllabus, but still, if you need to find, you can find. How will you find net profitability index? Answer of gross profitability index, which is one point two three five minus one. If you do, you'll get a positive. That is point two three five as such. So point one two three five is what positive net profitability. So easy to understand. Index gives you a more clear picture. So based on what is easy tomorrow when you start your business, you have to make investment. You need to decide which method is more. Easy for you to take it forward. I can't say this method only is to be used. It's your decision. It's your intellectual capability which you decide which method you should take it forward in the long run, right? Now, if you see this method, also have certain advantages. It takes time value of money, right? Similarly, it's easy and it requires less time. Similarly, if you say it's easy to compare projects because instead of amounts, you have index over here. 
So ranking the projects become very easy in this case as such. That's why profitability index or small modification to NPV, but it takes into account the same features of our net present value method. Same we have inflows and outflows, but whatever discounting method you take into consideration, keep in mind discounting factors need to be used.